Welcome to the Lara Jane Layton Show. This podcast is for you, the person who keeps putting others first. Your self-talk has held you back. You no longer need to take a second seat. Let's explore ways to overcome self-doubt. You can silence that inner bully voice and achieve your full potential. Here's your host, Lara Jane. Hello, listener. It's Lara Jane, and I am here with Emily, a new friend that I just met. And we are going to talk today about about authentic manifestation. This is new to me, so we're both going to learn. Anyway, Emily, I'm so excited to have you on the show. You could tell us a little bit about yourself and jump right into our authentic manifestation. So thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. And I'm really excited that this is new to you because I, you know, I get to teach you something new and, and it may just be terminology that you haven't heard before. And that's so beautiful. And um, I, without going too deep into my story, because I really want to be able to teach you guys some stuff here, you know, I um, always was that person that was, you know, growing up that I just kind of decided that I wanted to do things. I would just be like, yeah, I'm going to go and do this. And the world around me would be like, how are you going to do that? That's like, does not make sense? How are you going to pay for that? What are you going to do? Like, that's dangerous, you know? And I was just kind of like, oh, well, like, I'll figure it out. Like, it'll be okay. And I would make it happen, you know? And I, um, when I left high school, I traveled around the world and I just kind of made it work. Anytime I needed a job, it would just kind of happen for me. And then um, I kind of reached a, a point um, in my mid twenties, and I, I like I experienced some um, trauma in my early twenties there, and kind of suppressed it. And then when that kind of um, was buried deep down inside, it meant that that kind of flow wasn't happening anymore. It meant that that you know ease of of life just wasn't really, there was much more resistance going on. And at the time I didn't really understand that that's what was going on. But now looking back, I I completely understand that that's what was happening. And, um, but I was still certain things I was able to kind of call in quite, uh, easily, but there was this element of needing to work really hard for it. And back in, uh, I think it would have been maybe 2018, 2017, 2018, I did a lot of internal work and I cleared a lot of, or kind of started clearing a lot of that trauma and, and moved through that. And from that place, I, you know, I, you know, in the next couple of years, I uh, got my dream job, you know, as a primary school teacher and worked at my dream school, I was almost that like annoying person that would skip into work every day. That was like, I love my job. Life is so good. And I literally would have people that I worked with going, Emily, you just need to like cool it on like the positivity for a little bit because it's too much. And I was like, no, I'm just going to do what I do. Um, and life was like beautiful. And I, I uh, manifested my beautiful partner who, um, was just, you know, a beautiful uh, journey in itself. And, um, you know, I I found like a beautiful home to live in and like the perfect, like I love where I live. I'm like right by the beach and it's just absolute home for me. And, um, and I kind of reached this point in about, when would it be, 2020, 2021, when all of a sudden I was like, well, I, I did it all. I kind of ticked all those boxes, you know, I, I've kind of done all the things that I wanted to do. And then I had these kind of like other dreams that I thought that I kind of wanted. Like I was like, well, I guess now like I should get married. We should get married and have kids. But that like didn't feel right. It didn't feel true. But there was like this um, almost like this wounded part of me that was like, well, that's what I'm supposed to do. And it was like, well, now we should, you know, buy like a house and be responsible and and do that. So, you know, so I was saving to buy a house and and to do that. And I'm kind of going, yeah, like that's like a one day. But then there was these other dreams, these other kind of ideas of what I wanted that I I almost didn't really let myself dream them. And I had this like beautiful and uh, very full on, uh, you know, few months there where I was like, 
I don't know that I'm really fulfilled here. I was like, I, I did everything that I was supposed to do. I kind of ticked all these boxes. These next boxes don't really feel like me. They kind of feel like there was somebody else's idea. And I don't even know if the boxes that I've currently ticked were the ones that I wanted anyway. I don't even know what boxes I want to tick. I don't even know what I want. And it was like this flawed thing where I went from like skipping into work, being like, I love this so much. Like life is so good to being like, why am I anxious? Like overwhelmingly, like debilitatingly anxious. Why am I feeling completely unfulfilled? And what I know to be true now is that as human beings, particularly the um, feminine energy, not male or female, the feminine energy in all of us <laughs> yes. um, is always expanding and always wanting more, always desiring more. There's nothing wrong with it. It's part of our, you know, being able to grow. And I really just started, you know, I started kind of stepping more and more outside my comfort zone. I started um, doing things that um, kind of excited me. I started, you know, putting myself in containers and, um, you know, courses and hired mentors and things like that that just expanded me and pushed me. I kind of, I followed that feeling of that feels really good. Like that feels, you know, I would call it, you know, without um, swearing, like an, an F yes life. Like this is what I'm doing. If it is a full body, yes, then I'm just going to do it. And I kind of devoted a whole year, um, particularly last year, I was like, I'm just going to follow my yes. I'm just going to do whatever feels like a full body yes. And I did. And through that year, what I uncovered is there's a very, there's a very um, uh, potent energy and magnetism when you are your most authentic self. And while I, for years and years and years, have understood the, you know, the principles of manifestation, I under, you know, and I learned more and more and more about how it actually works and that there's actually a science to it. And it's really beautiful. It's like this incredible, like, orchestra, just all trying to bring you what you desire. And the most magnetic state of being is when you're in your truth and when you're in your authenticity. And what that means is that what you attract into your life is in alignment with that authenticity. Um, and that doesn't mean that you have to wait until you get to a particular point of like, now I am my fully expressed self. But when you start to peel back the layers, you start to see more and more the things in your life that aren't in alignment with that authenticity and you start to like attract and, it, you know, this can like rub people the wrong way, this like sense of like ease and the sense of like something being easy, but things do just like effortlessly kind of fall into, into place. That doesn't mean that you don't have to do anything. There's, you know, we live in a physical world and we need to do things to make them happen, but things do just kind of fall into place and, you know, opportunities come your way that are in alignment with that authenticity and those dreams that are your dreams. They're not somebody else's dreams. They're not, you know, that idea that you're supposed to, you know, have kids and be married before you're 30 and, and, and buy your own house and have, you know, all of those kind of things. If that's, if that's what is true to you, then amazing. Um, and it's really, really powerful when we start to question, is this actually in alignment with my authenticity? So that's like, you know, on a, in a really like kind of as succinct as I could like kind of put it, like what authentic manifestation is. It's creating your dream life, not the dream life that was kind of um, put in front of you, not the kind of dream life that somebody else decided for you. That full body yes dream life. I love the full body. Yes. Because sometimes we don't really know what we want or, or, or what's next, you know, like you can't authentically manifest if you don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. And so it's like learning and understanding what makes you tick. That's so unique. Um, so I love that. I've, I've experienced plenty of full body yeses. 
and I've experienced some full body no ways. <laughs> so it's like, okay, but it's in those middle grounds where it, how do you know when it's neither? Yeah. Well, I think that that's the really big thing that I talk to my community about and, and share with my clients. I move through them because, and this is so funny. I had a um, a friend of mine say to me the other day, she goes, I actually don't know who I am. And I was, and I just said, just, why don't we just like pop that like need to know who you are just off to the side? Cause you don't actually need to know. And this is something really, really powerful that was profound for me is that who you are changes in every moment of every day. It's not this stagnant thing. It's not this set in stone thing. And when you allow yourself to be um, malleable and you allow yourself to be flexible and you allow yourself to continue to evolve, it's not about reaching a point where you're like, this is who I am. This is my most authentic self. Um, It's about being on the, <laughs> sometimes I used to hate when people used to say this to me, I, but like, it's about being on the journey. It's about being in the process because if you reach a point where you're like, and I'm done, well, you know, in, in my like logical, like mind, if we're not growing, then we're dying. And I know that sounds like super, super harsh, but if you think about anything in nature, like think about like a, a pot plant, for instance, if it's it's either growing and it's getting bigger, it's getting more lush, it's you know growing new vines, or it starts to die. If it's not continue to continuing to grow, that doesn't mean it doesn't go through like little stagnant plateaus and things like that, depending on the seasons, of course. But you know, you notice when the plant has stopped growing, it's stopped in the growing phase, and all of a sudden you're like, it is dying. I need to put it in a new pot. I need to like give it some new soil, like fertilize it maybe prune it back a little bit because maybe some of those stems aren't serving it. And that's like when you start doing that work, when you start putting yourself in new environments, when you start following that full, that, that yes. And the thing is, is it doesn't have to be like a, yes, I completely know this. When you first start like connecting back in with your body and your intuition, you, can, you hear people talk about it and you're like, I, but I don't know what that means. I don't know what listening to my intuition means. I don't know what, um, you know, listening to my body means. And it's because I would, you know, this is not an official percentage, but like I'd say like 98% of people are like living from the neck up. Like they're, they're just in their head and very, very disconnected from their body. And the thing is, is that we hold so much wisdom in our body and it's beyond our like brains, like our mind's comprehension. Our mind can't comprehend like energetics. It can't comprehend like um, conceptual things. It will try and articulate it and put it into words so it can understand because our brain's just trying to keep us safe and trying to, um, you know, make sense of everything but when you can like let go of like, I don't actually need to know everything that like there's parts of me that I just get to continue to explore, which that's the fun part. And it's bringing it back to like what you can do if, if you know, following that full body yes is new to you or that like middle ground of like, well, it's not like an absolute no and it's not like a full yes, but I don't really know what to do here. One, let go of like the need to know sometimes, like, you know, sometimes just putting aside the decision for a little while can be really, really beautiful. And then I like, I personally would start doing the things that just spark a little bit of fun, that just feel like joy, like that just feel like you know, that would just be, you know, it's not like, a, oh my gosh, like, you know, going and I don't know, like learning uh, aerial silks or doing pole dancing, like would just feels like my whole dream. Like, I love that. It's uh, like, no, it can be like, well, that just sounds really fun to me. Like, it just sounds like different. It feels a little bit uncomfortable because I haven't done that before, but I'm just going to go and do that. And that, that just feels exciting to me. And those kinds of things start to just kind of retrain our brain that we get to follow the fun 
and it starts to tune into, we start to kind of connect back into our body and go, oh, that felt really good. You And you listened to me. I'm going to give you some more information. And every time you just listen to that little niggle, that little nudge, that little voice, however that, you know, comes to you, it's uh, imagine like a, um, I don't know, like a, like a, 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 a child or something like that who's trying to communicate something to you. If you never listen to that kid, if you're like, no, go away, like I'm not listening to you, they're going to stop asking and they're going to stop talking to you. But every time you tune in and you listen to them and then you act upon that that message or you just be present with it, they you build that trust of going, oh, you listened to me that time, I'll try again, I'll try again. And all of a sudden the channel of communication becomes really, really clear and those yeses and nos become really, really, really clear. But in the interim, I think there's like this real need to like, let's just like let go of this pressure of needing to like, like know exactly who I am and who I'm meant to be in the world. Like the fun of it is, is that it changes. It changes over time. It changes continuously. And that's how beautiful it is. Like that's how exciting it is. I don't look back at like, you know, me five years ago, going into teaching and like loving my job. At that point in time, that was my purpose in life. That was me and my authenticity. That doesn't mean that I was showing up like fake because that's not who I am now. At that period of time in my life, that was me being my most authentic self. Now that doesn't feel true. Now when I, you know, because I'm still in a transition period where I go, I still um, work. Now when I'm there, I'm going, I can be my most authentic self here and I know that I'm moving, I'm making moves to be able to move into a, a different reality and my reality is just taking time to kind of adjust to who I, I am now. Um, and also know that you can't make a wrong decision. Like that's a that's really, so really, true. really thing. You cannot make, you cannot mess it up. Like I agree. <laughs> this whole life is about learning. And no matter what path you're on or what path you go down, you are going to learn and you are going to grow. So I completely agree with you. But we're going to take just a quick break and get a word from our sponsor. And we're going to be right back because I want to hear more about trusting and allowing ourselves to move forward, even if you're not sure, because there is no right or wrong. Be right back. This podcast is sponsored by Lara Jane Coaching. You know you're ready to silence your inner bully voice. Let Lara Jane support you with coaching. To schedule an introduction call, go to larajanelayton.com. All right, we are back. Thank you so much. And I am just having a great time and just want to go back to that. There's no right or wrong. Whatever path you're on is the one you're learning from right now and is making you a stronger person. And so I'm completely there. Um, there are a couple other modalities. Well, there's several of them that people use to get the yes or no answers. And those are pendulums or muscle testing and all these different things. And if you aren't really sure, sometimes that's a good way just to do a right wrong. Like one day I thought, okay, I feel like I need to go to the hospital and get checked out, but I don't want to, and I don't go to the emergency room for anything. So I'm going to muscle test this. <laughs> and so, you know, it comes back with yes, go. Well, the funny thing is, is the reason I went wasn't a problem but they found something else. And so you just have to trust. And I remember telling my husband at the time, I wish I hadn't asked because I don't want to be here because I'm not going to not do it when I get the full yes. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it's it's trust and move through it, right? Yeah, yeah. And trust can be a really, really tricky one um, as well as surrender. And it's one of those things that I think um, 
is for me anyway, and I, you know, for a lot of people that I, I work with and a lot of people that I know, it's like the part of it that of, you know, manifestation of life that can be like our biggest uh, learning curve. You know, it's, it's especially if, um, you know, you've got elements of yourself that really like to hold on to control. And for me, that was like a huge thing. It's like, I need to control it. Like I don't have all of the information and I need to control this. Um, and I love to kind of, you know, bring in that like, um, you know, the quantum, very spiritual, like just trust that everything is going to be okay. And my like logical mind and my nervous system wants to know that I'm going to be safe here, you know, especially if you're, you know, going to make like choices in life, like, like, am I going to go to the doctor? Like, like who knows? And there's something telling me that I should, I should go. Um, and I don't really know, or it may be that you're making a decision to invest like more money than you've ever invested in your, in yourself. And you've never invested in yourself or, um, going on a trip or, breaking up with a a long-term partner or something like that. And our nervous system, whenever we bring in change, can um, panic, (laughs) really, and can freak out. And the thing is, is we take that as, I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do this. And the thing is, that first instinct of, like, this is what I need to do, um, it's not that it's always right. And it's about, you know, again, building that relationship between like, is this thought coming from fear or is it coming from love? And if it's coming from fear, it's, it's not your truth and it's not your, your true, you know, it's probably coming from somewhere else. And I would inquire into that. I would, you know, be asking and journaling on questions of like, where, where is this belief or this thought come from? And it does this belong to me? And is this true for me? And what's underneath here? And all of that. Um, and I had a train of thought here and I'm, it's coming back to me. Um, and, and sometimes I go on tangents and I like I forget what I'm talking too. about. <laughs> it's like, oops, um, oh well. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And that like concept of, I can't mess this up. I cannot make a wrong decision here. The way that I like to to look at it. And this is where manifestation really, really comes into play. And when you start to understand the, like the laws of the universe, and I won't go into depth there because I could talk about that for hours on end. (laughs) We don't have the time here, but when you understand how the universe works and that there's like, I kind of like visualize it as there's this like team that I have, like this invisible team that are like their sole purpose in life is to like one, take care of me to 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 make sure that like I'm okay like you know physically that I'm okay because you know I'm here in this physical world um to help me get where I want to go and to kind of like nudge me and to kind of bring me back onto the you know quote unquote right right path um when I fall astray and that can mean that sometimes we experience polarity, which essentially is just when we have an experience that shows us what we don't want. So, you know, it might be that we're like trying to manifest like our our dream partner in life and we think that we've found them and then it turns out to kind of just blow up in our face or something and we're going, well, I'm just not to, meant to be with anybody or I'm meant to be alone, like what's wrong with me and we make it mean something about ourselves. And it's just creating clarity to direct you towards what you do want or showing you a wounding or a pattern or a belief that you have that needs to be clear in order to align you with the the version of yourself that has that dream partner. And there are so many different kind of things that are at play all at once that we can't see. You might be going, well, I want, you know, um, this particular job or something like that. For instance, this is the job that I want. This is my dream job. I am like meant for this. And it may be like a full yes of like, yes, this is it. And you're kind of going, okay, well, how should I go about this? I'm not really sure. If you just move towards that and know that if you don't get it 
in the timeline that you thought or in the way that you thought, it doesn't mean that it's not meant for you. If you had the thought, if you had the desire, it is meant for you and what is meant for you will not go past you. And the how is not up to us. The how is not up up to us. And the thing is, is you don't know all the other things that are at play at the same time. There could be other people, other things that need to be shifted, other lessons that you may, may need to learn in order to be the person that gets that job. But I imagine it like this, um, I don't know, like this, like you can think of it like a genie or something like that, but it's just like, yes, your wish is my command. I will make this happen and goes in and like goes to this like supercomputer and is like kind of coding and like making things work and moving. Okay. Well, if that's going to happen, well, then this needs to shift and move here because in order for this, you know, dream to happen, then we need this in place on oh, this needs to happen first because, you know, um, she'll need this level of, of um, courage built up for her to be able to go into this. And there's all of these things. So, when you make a choice or you make a decision, you feel like you've trusted your you know, gut instinct or your heart. My, for me, it's more my heart where I feel it. Um, and you, it doesn't go the way that you thought it would. Just know that there's more things at play. It's just a shift. It's just like an expansion into something different. And also know that sometimes the that little like – person at the supercomputer is going, your wish is my command and I've got something better in store for you. Like, so whenever I like set that intention of, you know, um, like I, I really desire this, it's this or something better because that better is beyond what you can possibly comprehend here. Mm-hmm. And if we're like going, no, it has to be this way and I need my dream man to have, you know, brown hair and a ponytail and like must you know, have this kind of work in like a, this kind of job and be open to like all my spirituality things at the same time. And then you meet somebody and you go, look, they ticked all the boxes, but you run your own business. And that feels a little bit like insecure to me. So no, like, <laughs> and you're like well, you, you don't know that, 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 you know, person is, is maybe that better than what you could have imagined for yourself. Um, there was one other thing that I wanted to mention, particularly when we kind of go into that, um, I'm not, you know, like wanting to trust because it can feel uncertain. And like, like I said, like our brain and our nervous system is always trying to keep out, keep us safe. And that's like a really powerful thing to understand is that our brain, it's like, like, primary purpose is to keep us alive and to help us survive. It is an incredible, incredible machine that keeps us alive. And the thing is, is where you are now and everything that has happened to you before now has kept you alive. It has achieved its goal to keep you alive, to help you survive. Therefore, because that is what has happened in the past and that has kept you alive, your brain will do everything in its power to keep you in that familiar, in that comfort zone, in that what it knows, because it knows that that will keep you safe. So sometimes our brain can trick us into thinking that doing new things, like stepping outside our comfort zone, that um, attracting new things into our life is unsafe. And that comes up in our body where we literally have like, emotions of going, this is really unsafe. And this is where, you know, um, self-sabotage and things like that come into play. And when you can, you know, this is something I work a lot with my clients with is nervous system regulation. When you can make those moves and make those steps and set those intentions and, and start to attract different into your life. And I just use different because the word different, because it just It's just different to what what you've always known. And then regulating your nervous system to that different, it it shifts the baseline of that normal. It expands that comfort zone, that bubble of what your brain and your nervous system believes to be safe. 
And then as you do that, as you start to kind of do little things and they don't have to be big things, just little steps that feel a little bit uncomfortable because uncomfortable doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. Feeling a little bit scared doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. But as you start to do that, you start to rewire your mind and your brain to go doing new things is safe. Like it, it creates new neural pathways because once you do it, you're going to feel really good. Like, you know, that was really exciting. I was so nervous beforehand and I did it and now I'm like excited. And it starts to create those new neural pathways that doing new things is safe. Like it's okay. Um, and those challenging things and doing new things become easier over time. And our body and our nervous system feels safe doing those things and safe when the manifestation arrives and rather than, you know, then tearing it all to the ground because you're, it's too overwhelming for um, your systems. You know, you use the word different and I love it. You know, I, I go with the, it's not good or bad. It just is. It's not <laughs> better or worse. It's, it's different. And that's so important because Really, there's, you know, we're we're in a duality world. It's right, wrong, mm-hmm. black, white, but it's not really that way. You know, it's it's all good. <laughs> if you can use a positive or negative word, it's not even all good. It all just is. It's yeah. all just an energy. It's all just something that we deal with. And so I love the word different and I've never used it in that way before. And I know that it's going to stick because it's such a beautiful way of showing that we're changing and learning, but it's not this huge mountain. It's just mm-hmm. different. I yeah. Love it. Yeah. And it's not the better or worse. I think yeah. that we can kind of go, well, I, I don't want to do that because that's worse than what I have here. And I don't want to do that because that's better than what, what I have here. And, and I don't actually think that I'm worthy of that. Your, your worth has nothing to do with it. Like let's, yeah. like, let's be real. There's so much talk around like worthiness and things like that. Your worth has absolutely nothing to do with it. It's we as human beings are meaning making machines. We make everything mean something. And if we can make different mean good, different mean exciting, different mean uh, I get what I want, different mean I continue to grow, different means I get to live my dream life. Rather than I'm chasing this dream, which like that, like a visual, visual of like chasing my dream is like exhausting me. I'm chasing my dream so that I can have a better life because what I have now sucks. Like I have to run away from this because I have to, no, we get to just continue to like step more and more into that authenticity, into who we, um, you know, feel our most selves, our most, the word that I love most is, is resonance. And that's just this, you know, it's a very hard concept to articulate verbally because it's a, a feeling it's that sense of ease and that, but there's, there's power in it. It gives your body power. And by power, I just mean energy. And it's like, this is me. This is where I feel good. And it may just start with like little flickers and sparks. Um, but when you step into that resonance, into that authenticity, you're not chasing. You're just making choices and making moves in life that are just stretching you a little bit, which are just making like little shifts. And those like little shifts and those little moves compound over time, like astronomically. It's not a one plus one equals two situation. It's like a one move plus another move equals like 10 shifts in like the, you know, quantum because we when we make those moves, it's sending a, you know, signal to to the universe that we're willing to change, we're willing to um, choose ourselves and we're actually open to a different life. And then our brain and our nervous system is going, yeah, well, different is safe and different is um, you know, exciting and different is fun. And I'm you know, open to that. And it's just this like cycle and this process of continually expanding, continually choosing different, continually regulating our nervous system to the new 
um, and rewiring it. And it just becomes easier and easier and it creates flow. It creates this effortless flow and you'll continue to have new dreams and new goals and things like that. And it's that's what's exciting. And that's like literally, you know, if you've ever asked like the, why am I here on this earth? Like, that's why you're here. You're literally here for that process and that experience along the way. It's not to get to a point at some point where you're finished. There's no finish line. The finish line is death, <laughs> you know, and then. It's not <laughs> even done then. <laughs> it's already gets super morbid on you. <laughs> <laughs> then you know it's it's this it's the process and that's that's it and we we're so often like focused so much on like the the future that we're forgetting about like that right now like who am I showing up as and who am I being right now I love it mm-hmm. where am I right now yeah and I am exactly what I'm supposed to be right now no matter mm-hmm. what and I I, it's it's a hard concept. No, it's a concept that we didn't learn. And once you learn it, it's a very gentle and easy concept. But it mm. is just knowing and trusting that universe that is going to put us where we need to be, when we need to be there. And that if we feel like it's a detour, It's not to the universe. And so it really is that trust. And the other thing that you mentioned subtly multiple times is just that gratitude is just once you can really appreciate what you have, the universe is willing to give you more. But Mm -hmm. if we're constantly hateful or frustrated at what we have now, it's not time for more. And so really just that trust and that, oh, thank you. And and I love the way it's like, yeah, that was my authentic self five years ago, but I'm still authentic. I'm different, but I'm still mm-hmm. authentic. And so that's a really amazing thing to do. I know that in politics, and I'm not a politics people, and I hate bringing this up, but I always kind of chuckle inside when they badmouth a politician for something they said 30 years ago and you go, I'm not the same person I was 25 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago. You can't hold me to all those things I said Mm -hmm. because I choose to move on and I choose to grow and change and learn. And that's what we're here for. So yeah, Mm -hmm. it's like, it's okay to be different. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not who I was like a week ago, like we're continually evolving and, and like there's that permission piece to, to be like, okay, we're changing. Like, and the people around you will adjust if, because quite often we're holding on to that image or that idea of who we were out of fear of what the people around you will um, think or how they'll react. Are they going to be okay with, um, you know, who you be in, in this moment, will they leave? Like they will adjust. And what you're doing is you're actually giving them permission to also shift and change and evolve. You're showing them what is possible. And the thing is, is what, what are the, what somebody else is, is doing, what they're thinking, their beliefs, um, <laughs> their idea about you, has absolutely nothing to do with you. It is it is their business. It is it's their wounding, their lens that they're looking at the world, and it has absolutely nothing to to do with you. And we just kind of get to let go of of that fear, and it's a it's a challenging one. I'm not gonna. I'll say that it's simple, but it's not easy. Um, as a lot of this work is, it's it's much more simple than than what we think. But it it doesn't mean that it's easy. Um, yeah, we have been trained since infants to please. Mm-hmm. When you smile, your mother giggles and pays more attention to you, and she's pleasant. When you cry, she's not as pleasant, and she gets stressed. And from that. You know, your first kids in school, you're taught to conform and to not make waves. That's just the way we're up. Most of us, there are some people mm-hmm. that didn't go through that, but most of us were raised, please. And you 
have to take the chance to not please and to realize that we're all here on our own path. And you can't judge a kindergartner against a college student. They know different things. They're on, they may be on the same path, but they're in different places. You've mm-hmm. got to allow people their own place in life, their own path in life. And as you cross, just know that they're there for a reason. And I noticed that my friends, my real friends have have adapted and changed along with me, whether I'm with them or doesn't matter who inspired the change, but we're changing together Mm -hmm. and growing together and not apart. And then there's the ones that you are done with and you move on and you're, that's okay. It doesn't Mm -hmm. mean you've lost or it doesn't mean you were bad just means it was time for a change. And so I, yes, I love it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, there's one thing that I have learned is that whether you are showing up inauthentically, either consciously or unconsciously, most of the time it's unconsciously, or you're being your most authentic self, you're attracting people into your life who are a match for who you're, who you're being, your beingness. And if you're being the kind of person who's kind of hiding who you are, you're pretending because you want people to like you, you're going to attract people who kind of fit that mold and also who you continue to feel the pressure to be liked by them. You continue to feel the pressure to hide certain parts of you because you'll be judged. But the magic is that when you let go of that and you keep peeling back the layers and you step into that authenticity, you attract people who just see you for who you are. You attract people who you don't have to hold on. You can let go of. And I know this is a huge wounding for so many women. It was a huge wound of mine was this, this sister wound and, you know, female relationships and, um, you know, feeling, you know, I was bullied in high school and things like that. And it's such a common, common thing of not trusting each other or competing against each other and comparing. And I'm like, I'm here to tell you from, I have experienced it over and over and over and over again. There is a whole like massive community of women and people out there who are waiting for you in your authenticity, who will fall into your life and who will love you for who you are, who will support you for who you are, who will see you for who you are and who you do not need to be anyone but yourself when you're with them. And there is so many people. It exists. It is there. I like if if you are somebody who has grown up pretending to be someone else, this is like one of the most powerful manifestations in my life. My friends now compared to what, like two years ago, I have, I think maybe two of the same friends, two of the same friends. That's it. And I'm talking, I have so many beautiful people in my life. A lot of them who, like some of them who live here in my community and a lot of them who live like in other countries and we still call each other and we message each other and we talk to each other all the time. And I don't need to pretend to be anyone else with them. And that happened so effortlessly when I just let go of that like, mask of that, like, I need to be a certain way to fit into this group. It's like a, no, I'm just going to be myself and just watch the puzzle pieces of people who are meant to be with me come and fit in with me and come and be with me. It's not even a fitting in. It's just a a being together. It's belonging. It's, Mm -hmm. It's like when you fit in, you're changing your edges and shape to fit. But mm-hmm. if you belong, you're there. They're the people that you don't have to change for. They're the people mm-hmm. that you're are so comfortable to be around. And I, I, you know, I'm so blessed to have some of those people in my life. It's just amazing. 
and to have your ups and downs, you know, it doesn't matter what path you're on. The weather, it rains, it blows, it snows some places. It, it's not always the same, but it's always the perfect environment for growing our trees and our grasses and keeping the air clean. And so you've got to trust the wind that affects your day, the rain. And you got to trust those days when you just feel like staying in bed. And the days that you're out there being everybody's ray of sunshine, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's nature. It's the way it's supposed to be. And just because we're authentic doesn't re mean we're absolutely the same actual every moment of every day we're growing, we're learning, we're progressing. And so I just, I love your message. I, it's resonating. So yeah. I have, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Oh, I, I would, we can keep talking. I have no deadline. Of course, that's kind of a lie, but I kept lots of deadlines, but <laughs> um, we are way out of our 30 minutes. <laughs> and I know that I was going to say, if, if you don't give me a time frame, I can, you can probably <laughs> tell already. I could talk all day. <laughs> I know our listener is going to go, this is fine. It was well worth the extra time. So you know, I don't have any problem with it, but we are going to go ahead and close out. But my favorite thing to do at the end is what is your last little bit of wisdom you would like to share with us? Oh, I, I've had this question a few times on a few podcasts. And I always kind of go, I don't really know, but the thing that keeps coming up for me recently is to just play, follow the fun. And I know this isn't like this like profound like thing, but the thing is, is the experience of it is profound. Like play with life. We take life so seriously. Like, like watch a child like stomping in puddles and like let go of that little voice going like, oh, they're going to get all muddy and wet and gross and go and stomp in some puddles and laugh because it's fun. You know, like take the time to like, play with your dog and, and run around with them rather than just watching them, you know, go in, like do some craft because why not? Um, like organize like a, a, a silly like games day out, like with your like friends, like be a big dork and just have fun and play. And that will uncover that authenticity that will, you know, who you like that childlike wonder, that childlike, fun and play is a huge element of that authenticity and it will unlock so much and it is so magnetic. Wow. That's so funny because it was probably a year ago when I was telling my kids, I just want to be fun again. I just want to have some fun. I'm so tired of the serious do, do, do person that's just so focused on mm -hmm. make money and and be awesome. I just want to have fun. And my kids will go, but mom, you are fun. I go, but I, it doesn't feel fun anymore. So I wanted it to feel fun and life is fun now. <laughs> it's so worth it. So yes, enjoy the fun along with your authenticity. So thank you so much, Emily, for joining us. This has just been amazing. I've totally loved the whole time. Just want to remind our listener that Emily and I are not medical or mental professionals. We are here for entertainment purposes. Our full disclosure is in the show notes if you'd like to check it out. And we look forward to talking to you on the next episode. See you later. Are you tired of waking up exhausted? You are not alone. If you're looking to take your life back, let's start with the simple step of adjusting your self talk. Stay tuned for the next episode with your host, Lara Jane. Remember to follow the show so you don't miss a next simple step that you can use to feel more confident. And please leave an honest review.